We are here today with Misty Busher, who is seeking re-election to treasurer for the city of Springfield in the April 2nd election. We appreciate you making time to talk with us and invite you to start by providing an opening statement about why voters should re-elect you to this position. Thank you very much, Angie, and thank you all for being here. My name is Misty Busher, and I'm your current city treasurer. I was elected four years ago as your treasurer, and I am the proud wife of Michael Busher. We have two children, Courtney and Anthony Busher, and our son Anthony and his wife Crystal are expecting a child, so our North End Busher family will be growing by the end of this month by one. I'm very proud of that. I was so excited to be elected city treasurer, and I did believe at the present time and still at the current time that I was the best person for that position. Our office as a team has accomplished many things, and some of the things that we've accomplished as a team, just to kind of let you know what we've done, touch on a few things. We have successfully put an ATM in City Hall. We have successfully integrated and upgraded the city's credit card system where we can take Visa, eCheck, and have a shopping cart feature in that system. The system was so popular and great that the Illinois State Treasurer's Office moved over to the same system that we had. So that was um, kind of nice to be asked as a reference for that. We also updated the collection ordinance so that the city does not have to pay for collections anymore. So that's just a handful of some of the things we've done. I do want you to know that I believe my background in 25 years in banking from being a teller all the way up to a vice president of a bank has allowed me to accomplish many things in the treasurer's office. And Crystal can attest that my favorite thing to talk about is all of the interest that we've made for the taxpayers. We are now a revenue uh, generating source for the taxpayers. You averaged about $86,000 a year in the past for interest income. We now average a million dollars a year, and that's completely 100% revenue for the taxpayers. I do believe my banking background was a lot what allowed me to accomplish that and put a pencil to paper in the treasurer's office, so I do think I'm the best person for the job. Thank you. I was going to ask you about your successes during your first term in office. That was um, just a few. So. That was just a few. Were there any <laughs> yes. you didn't mention? There was, because I was on a timeline. <laughs> um, yes, so the collection ordinance, the reason that we did that was the city was paying a collection agency for the fees of collection. The collection ordinance that was passed by the alderman actually makes that fee responsible for the debtor. So the city is no longer losing that money. Um, then we also consolidated the software in City Hall. There was a many different software systems in each de department where we would not know where someone's current address was, if they had debt with the city. So I worked with the IT department and we consolidated all that software into one and the offices share the same software. So we all work together now in the different city offices. Also, um, while in fiscal year 19, our aldermen were cutting the budget because there were budgetary issues, as you'll remember, we cut a staff member out, so we lost a salary that was quite large, so that helped um, with the budget. Then we, um, I noticed, I guess I should say, as far as the money went, when I got into the office, our fines area had one cash drawer and our accounting area had one cash drawer, and there were several people in each area working out of the one cash drawer. So I worked with our IT department to upgrade the cashiering system, and now there is a separate cash drawer for each individual person so that we have more accountability in the office when it comes to the cash drawers. And then again, the biggest uh, uh, increase was the revenue. So we talked about that, the interest that we've accrued, and now we're a revenue source for the city, which is really exciting. Could you talk a little bit more about the specifics of how that occurred sure. in terms of what you changed? Absolutely. So when I took office, the uh, city had all of their f accounts with one entity. So we analyzed, at that time, there were over 100 accounts the city had. When I say accounts, that's checking savings money markets. So we analyzed the number of accounts and pared that down. There are a lot less, so you pay less bank fees. That's first of all. And then we disperse the money amongst different financial institutions to get a better rate of interest on our return and also be able to, to be able to negotiate lower fees. So it was a combination of those three things. Are there city ordinances that require local or use of local banks or facilities or anything? No, that would be nice, wouldn't it? When I started, it was not local, but it is over 50% local now. Uh, we have uh, at least seven local banks we have funds in. And then if it's not at a local bank, it is with the Illinois funds, which is the state treasurer's office. So yes, we've all opened them up with local banks now. And could you tell tell us a little more about the Illinois funds, the sure. state? state it's a, what people in my industry call a LGIP, local government investment 
investment pool, and it's an investment pool where government agencies can pull their money together and invest to try to get a better rate of return. And actually, there are several of those popping up separate from the state treasurer's office that are um, other government agencies that have formed a pool and had a man have a manager manage that for them. So there are multiples out there now. And it just allows you to pull your money together to try to get a better rate of return. So are there interest rate issues with local banks relative to more national banks? Local banks are more cooperative in giving us a higher rate of interest and lower fees. I can honestly say that. You may not have all the fancy bells and whistles when it comes to a cash management system online, but you're getting a higher rate of return and you're getting much, much less in fees. For that um, software tracking program you mentioned, um, I was looking at that earlier today in our, our archives and in August of 2017, we had reported that not all of the city departments were in that. Is that now a fact? Has, that, has everyone gotten on board with that one? Everyone's in it. Um, our IT department, we're writing the software piece for our um, debt recovery program and the utility to be in there. Okay. So if you damage utility pole, you owe them money for that or your insurance company does, depending upon if you have insurance. And um, that piece is getting added in. It just was added in at the beginning of the year. And then our legal department is a part of it now too. So we're all sharing that software. Okay. Um, the city treasurer's office has a lot of functions Correct. Um, that uh, maybe everyone doesn't know about. Um, in you balance the city funds, you manage the city's investments. You collect and process parking violations, mm -hmm. which I was kind of surprised at. Administration of the fire and police pension funds and the receipt depositing and recording of all city revenue. That was according to the website. Mm -hmm. What do you think the average Springfield resident doesn't understand about the treasurer's office that you wish they did? There's a handful of things. I, it's more than one, if you don't mind if I expand Go. on that. Go for it. Um, the first one is we are not a decision-making body. The decision-making body is the mayor and the 10 aldermen. So we are a fiscal office that supports that decision-making body, even though I am elected and the clerk is duly mm -hmm. elected, nor myself or the clerk are decision-making bodies. So I think it's important the public knows that, that we, I can go to an alderman, for instance, with a collection ordinance and say, I need your help. I need a sponsor for this ordinance. It's needed. But I cannot sponsor. Mm -hmm. I cannot go up, and I don't vote. So it's, I think the first part is we're not part of the decision-making body. And the second part is that our office balances on a typical day between 185 and $200 million a day. And I don't think the taxpayers realize how much money the treasurer's office physically and actually sees. So it's a large responsibility, and the staff members we have have to take that responsibility very seriously. So, so say those numbers again, would you please? We, we uh, manage between 185 and $200 million a day because we manage not only the city's funds, but the utilities funds. And so it's a combination of water, electric, and then the city funds, which is a lot of money. And I'm not sure our, our taxpayers are aware of, of the fiduciary responsibility of so much cash and money. Okay. Um, the parking violations that I brought up. Uh, last summer, you, you filed a Freedom of Information Act request regarding, yes, some, of the, regarding um, some of the parking issues regarding the, the negotiations between the city and parking meter company, um, I, IPS group. I guess talk to us about the circumstances that led you to have to do that. The um, parking meter discussions had been ongoing for over a year, I believe. It was a very long time. And I was involved in the very beginning of the process when they talked about what do we want from the meters, meaning what does my office need? So Public Works manages the physical mechanism of the meter, and then they also manage the ticket writing itself and the mechanism to which you write with, whatever software you're using, handheld device. They also manage collecting the money from the meter, but then from that point forward, it all transfers to our office. So I am in charge of the account in which they deliver the coins that come from the meter, by the way, there is a financial institution locally that counts all that coin for free for us, so I thank That's them. Nice. Yes, I thank them very much. <laughs> no fees there. Um, so we're in charge of that, and then we are also in charge once the ticket is issued. The person who issues the ticket, whether it be a traffic warden or a police officer or the meter writer on the street, issues a ticket. From that point forward, it goes to us. 
We are responsible then for sending the 14-day notice, the 30-day notice, the 45-day notice, the 60-day notice, and following up with the person from that point forward to get it paid or turn it over to further collection processes. So my interest in the conversation was how, to we, how do we make sure that we do all of those things in the most efficient way possible in the cheapest way possible? I'm very fiscally conservative. So I was a part of those conversations. The RFPs came in. The, they issued an RFP, RFPs came in. The Department of Public Works chose a handful of vendors they liked the best, so those were the ones that were considered. We went through an interview process. Myself and my office manager were a part of that. And then we were to the point where recommendations were gonna be made, and it was kind of, uh, just kind of, for whatever reason, I don't know, held. I don't know if Public Works wasn't ready or didn't know what they wanted, you know, or I'm not quite sure I wasn't a part of that, but there was just several months where nothing happened. Well, then I was asked by one of the vendors, this IPS group, if I would be in on this conference call in order to talk about the contract that was being negotiated, and I didn't know that they were our, you know, I guess I knew they were our choice because someone from Public Works had them come speak at a council meeting, so I assumed they were the choice because they spoke. I was never told directly that was the choice. Um, but they came and spoke at a council meeting, and I was surprised to see them there, but then I kind of figured out who they were. Um, so then I asked the vendor, thank you, you know, told the vendor, thank you for inviting me on the call. I'm happy to be there. And then I was told that I really wasn't supposed to be on the call, that I needed to not be there. So that's where my radar came up, I guess. I was okay. concerned. So I um, asked later about the contract and the conversations that ensued in choosing them and hammering out the contract. And I just really wasn't getting the answers I needed. Therefore, I filled out the FOIA request. I just figured that was the best way to get it since I couldn't get the answers. And um, unbeknownst to me, when I got the FOIA request, it was not complete. And I knew it wasn't complete. That's when I called Don Craven, who is an attorney in town who knows FOIA very, very well. That's why I chose him. And he got involved, which is when the story broke. And I'm not sure if Crystal wrote that or <laughs> who that was that was Crystal. So um, it happened to be just me wanting the information. Uh, the contract came back on the FOIA, and there were a lot of things in the contract that did affect our office mm -hmm. that were really concerning to me. So that's why I inserted myself in the process. There was a, an alderman or two who were concerned about me inserting myself in the process and asked me why I was doing so, but it was because our office handles such a large portion of that. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, the credit card fees in that contract were almost 35% the city was going to pay or the citizen was going to pay. Somebody was going to pay to use a credit card, and we don't pay those kind of fees right now. Collection fees were going up. It was just a, a wide variety of different fees going up that concerned me, whether it was us paying it or the constituent paying it. So, um, again, it was all fiscal for me. It didn't have to do with who they picked or why it was all fiscal. Okay. And did you, I guess, how was this resolved or is it still ongoing? It's, um, I think that the mayor decided because of the possible pushback from me, I'm not sure the situation, to wait and see what would happen, just kind of wait, get through the election season, see what we want to do. Um, I did look at the budget. There wasn't money in the Public Works budget to buy new parking meters because I did look because they were over a million dollars to replace mm -hmm. all the meters, which was a lot of money. And then the contract we had, it was going to cost between seven and eight thousand dollars a month to have the wireless data feed to the meter. So we were also going to get a monthly bill for that meter. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, every ticket issued, the meter company was going to get approximately two dollars for every ticket issued. So there was a lot of money being spent that we currently do not spend, and so therefore I was worried from a fiscal standpoint. That's when I came up with the idea of do we test, and I asked if we should test, then later I in a meeting to the mayor separately, I said, should we test bagging the meters on some streets, trying free parking, and just doing what we call monitored zone, zone parking? So if it's two hour zone, you don't pay to park in that zone, but if you're there for longer than two hours, you receive a citation. Mm -hmm. And the funds that we would lose from the coins in the meters, we could increase the cost of the citation to make that up, and then no one would have to pay to park downtown, whether it be a visitor or a citizen. Um, you would still have to have the monitored time zones yeah. because there are too many people who work downtown that would just abuse it and not pay for monthly parking and then just park on the street for free. And then our visitors or our citizens wouldn't have anywhere to park. So you'd still have to monitor it. So you're saying you don't think we should have any meters or? It was something I wanted to test. Okay. It was. I, I believe fiscally, if we're in the numbers, we can 
be fine not okay. having the the coins bring in between 400 and 450 thousand dollars a year depending upon how popular our year has been parking downtown and whatnot um, so you would want to make up that loss of revenue but with the expense of the new meters and the ticket writing and the software monthly upgrades you'd have to balance all of that out okay so that's why i was putting a pencil to numbers for quite some time when that was going on okay. so long story short that decision relative to the parking meters was deferred correct sorry yes you're right <laughs> no i mean I, I appreciate the story it's just yes and so. i and i know that alderman tylan just recently at, an, at a council meeting asked the mayor if he could put meters back on capital on the side of the library just across the street from you here because people need to park to get to the library and there's not enough parking right around the library and the mayor said at the meeting he wasn't going to put the meters in he was going to make it zoned parking and try the zone so i got really excited because it might be a little bit of a test okay when i heard that at a council meeting it was good news yes have you had to do that in other instances, like file a FOIA to not get in? For, okay. No, this that was the, the one time. and only time. Okay. And, and I don't know what the push was with that company and the contract. And like I said, there were many pieces in the contract that touched our office. And that's where I got concerned because our expenses would either go up or the company was yeah. taking the, the work 100% away from our office. And mm -hmm. then do my staff members have a job? And I'm, I'm like a little mama bear. I'm protective of those people in there. You mentioned you lost a staff member during budget cuts mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. How has your office adapted to doing that? Very well. The treasurer will work. Mm -hmm. And I'm not lying. By me cutting that staff position out, the treasurer has some of those duties. Okay. So the treasurer and the deputy treasurer took the bulk of those duties, and maybe 15% were given to the office manager. So the treasurer has to do a lot more physical work with the accounts in, this, in the system than in the mm -hmm. past. Okay. Let's look forward now as on your campaign website today mm -hmm. and you talked about how you would uh, use your second term to i think this is a quote continue your path of efficiency as you safeguard and protect the city's funds and then you list some of those priorities so i'd like to kind of go through those sure um, individually and have you tell us about them and how you'd accomplish them one was you want to develop an online permit applications and payments with other city agencies what do you think in there i want us to be a one-stop online shop I want, if you need a permit to repair your roof, if you need a permit for a block party, if you are a cab driver and you need a permit to renew your cab license, your cab permit, you can go online and initiate that process. So right there were three separate offices in those three instances. None of those permits are handled by the same office. So we would need to work with all the different agencies within the city, which are under the mayor's purview, not mine, in order to allow the application to be initiated online. And when I started this conversation in these last four years in City Hall, I made a lot of people upset because they were like, they can't be approved that quickly. Well, when I was at the bank, we had online applications all the time. And it didn't mean you were approved. It mean your, meant your application had been initiated. And then we followed up with you with, thank you for your application. Here are the pieces of documentation we need from you. So we would want to do the same in City Hall. Allow the consumer to apply for whatever permit they needed online. And then we would follow up with them from our offices of whomever it was and say, this is what we need from you. This would be your, for instance, the the building permits are based on square footage. There's not a blanket charge. So we still have the opportunity to follow up and let them pay online, too, if they wanted. They could submit documentation online. Clearly, you cannot submit house plans online because they're large. But a lot of your documentation you could submit online. And that way, it would allow our taxpayers to not necessarily have to come to City Hall if they did not need to. OK. And, um you would have a role in that because you, your office collects the fee, The money. The we handle okay. the money, and then we handle the visa and credit card procurement. Okay. So all that goes through our office. Okay. Um, you also want to develop an interagency forecasting system, and you said to allow precise planning of infrastructure repairs, equipment purchases, and investments. So yes, talk to us about that. I know that sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Does it does sound like words. a lot. <laughs> um, so I noticed since I've been there, there really isn't a software that we use as a municipality shared between public works, police, fire, OBM, treasurer, clerk, mayor, um, where we can look at 
for three years for your particular fund because each agency has its own funding mechanisms. Not everybody's funded the same. Mm -hmm. Here's how much you got in. Here's how much you spent so that they can kind of see in a broader picture where they're at. And then I can see where they're at so I know how to better invest their funds long term. I cannot make a lot of long term investments because... I don't know when they're going to need the money. I talk to each agency individually, but it would be really nice to have this out there so that we can all share. And everything that I try to do is sharing. I don't try to just upgrade the treasurer's office because I feel we have a lot of silos in government and we really need to do more sharing of information. So I have started researching some software and there is some out there that we could utilize and put old data in to start looking at and then we would customize it for ourselves. Okay. Um, you also stated you want to increase the visibility of the city finance system on the website. So how would you do that? Yes. So you've probably heard me in the past talk about our antiquated software at City Hall. And it's um, something that was a hurdle for me, I guess, coming from the private sector because we were constantly upgrading our software in the private sector and the government, there really isn't money for that. And it's kind of something that goes on the back burner. It's more important for us to fill potholes and buy fire trucks and police cars and bulletproof vests than it is to buy software. So it's sort of one of those things that's necessary, but it doesn't happen often. So what I would like to do um, with that is be able to take the checkbook so to speak, for lack of better words, which there's more than one, yeah. but have it on the website where you, the citizen, can look back and see for the last 30 days, we wrote X amount of do dollars to, I'm going to just pick on a vendor and they're, I'm a friends with the owner, so I can pick on them in their local Red Wings shoes. Per our union contracts, we supply steel toad boots to some of our employees and that. And then you, the consumer, can see how much did we spend on shoes that month, for instance. And we are shopping local with that, so that's exciting. Um, but, um, but, it's just something difficult for a consumer to put their finger on where our money is going every month. I issue a report, the treasurer's annual report every year, which has how many checks have been written to each vendor and how much money, but why should you wait annually for that? I would rather it be out there quicker than monthly, but I'm working with our IT department. I'm asking for a lot. So right now we're starting with monthly and then we'll go from there. You did bring up uh, the cost. Yes. These are all things that sound like they would cost some money. Correct. How do you propose paying for them? That cost is something that we're trying to write internally with our IT department and myself, which when you do write software internally, you have to be patient. We have some very, very talented people in our, and I keep saying IT because that's what the general word is, but the city, they call it ISD, Information Systems Department means the same thing. We have some very talented programmers there that can do this. It's just going to take time to wait for that to happen. Okay. How about the other ones uh, we were talking about, you know, your, um, like this, this developing this online permit applications and payments, mm -hmm. would that require new software? I believe it would require a, a software that we could just use internally maybe through our website okay. so you would want to link like let's use public works for instance with the roofing permit you would want to be able to go to the city's website springfield.il.us click on public works click on i need a roofing permit and then have it feed through public works uh, the clerk's office handles birth and death certificates go there for that Todd Oliver and our legal department handles the liquor permits. You would have to go there for that. So I think it's going to have to be an online application system through each individual department because they each handle them individually, which, again, would go back to our internal IT department. Um, luckily, our credit card vendor is very easy if you wanted to take the payment online to adapt to our software. They've done it through Lincoln Library, uh, my office and the clerk's office. So they've already worked with our software, the credit card vendor, which is fantastic. The utility uses the same credit card vendor as well if you use your credit card online with the utility. Um, so more or less, it would be more of the application process itself through the software okay. or the online system of that dependent independent agency and then going from there. So I, I'm hoping it wouldn't be as expensive as it sounds, it's just time consuming. Got it. So a couple of things. You said that there were um, the city generates four hundred to four hundred fifty thousand in coins mm -hmm. in the meters. Yes, sir. How much by way of tickets? How much by way of tickets? The tickets are a lot more. It's kind of strange to put this in perspective because tickets are hot up in payments because we have 
for lack of better words, turned up the heat in trying to get the money. Right. Um, so there's more money being generated now in tickets. So you can see in tickets, and this is a combination of traffic wardens, police department, and the downtown folks because our system oh, sees them all at one. All right. yeah. yeah, it doesn't separate them. Yeah. So when I say police department, our police department right and our traffic wardens write a lot of $250 citations for handicap parking. Um, there's oh. a lot of that. So you're going to talk about um, at least – Eight hundred thousand dollars to a million in ticket revenue, but it's because there are some really larger tickets being issued than just a ten dollar parking citation. Sure. So, okay. yeah. Sure. So, after all is said and done with the contract that was being suggested and everything, mm -hmm. just the math I've been doing up here, I haven't even put it on the paper. It doesn't. It sounded like that contract was going to cost us, cost the city more than revenue that was available? They were going to have to eventually increase the cost at the meter to, to plug it, for lack of better words. And it would take a minimum of about three years to pay the meters off, and then we have that monthly fee, plus we're losing revenue on each ticket. So not only are you looking at increasing the cost of the meter, but increasing the cost of the ticket, which is where I thought, do we bypass the meters and just increase the cost of the ticket and save ourselves money and make our community maybe a little bit more friendly? And it would probably look prettier to walk down the street and not see parking meters at every spot. <laughs> so it was just a, a thought. And it may, and, and again, I told the mayor, I'm about testing things. I think testing is good. Before you pull the trigger and spend a lot of money or make a giant decision, you should test. So that's why I thought we should pick a few zones, test them out, and see what happened. So, And then uh, finally, at least from me, what um, you've got a unique perspective and kind of observing all of that, attending all of the meetings, hearing everything mm -hmm. that's going on. Do you see any other efficiencies that the city could adopt? The biggest efficiency that I want to see is that forecasting so that I was telling you about. I do not believe we prepare ourselves well enough for our problems. And when I say problems, it could be aging sewers. It could be too many aged fire trucks at one time. We have all of these commodities that are aging all the time very quickly. Um, we're going to be purchasing some police cars and fire trucks and public works vehicles, but they're borrowing the money. They borrow the money. They pay it off in three years. They borrow the money. They pay it off in three years. And I'm not saying people, I, I liken this to my customers and the bank. People didn't need to always borrow money if they saved for it, or maybe you save for half and borrow half. It was just something that I tried teaching folks in my consumer economics when I helped them at the bank, and I wanted us to take a bigger part of that at the city level. If I know that I can invest money longer than maybe a one-year term, I could get a better rate of return, sometimes, not today, but sometimes. Um, and so that would also help with that piece. So the biggest issue I see is the forecasting, not, and, and I think our council members would agree because some of them are very frustrated this budget season. I don't know if you've heard their voices, but um, last budget season they voted to increase some different tax bases in order to create revenue, and now this budget season they're being told we have all this extra money. And they feel a little frustrated because they were like, wait a minute, and I think Alderman Hanauer says it's the Christmas miracle, but you know we had no money, now we have all this extra money, where did it come from? I believe that forecasting piece will help us in that Gonna part. Smooth that out. Correct, so that's actually my biggest desire, but again, <clears throat> I, I go to money every single time. It's all I've ever done for a living, so it's I annoy some of my friends at times, but anyway. That would be my biggest efficient, efficiency I see. Okay. Well, we thank you, Misty, for meeting with us today. And thank you. We invite you to give a brief closing statement as to why voters should choose you to prevail on Election Day. I believe that the voters should choose Misty Bushers as their city treasurer for the next four years because I have proven through making them a million dollars a year that I take my job seriously. I'm very proud of my job. I'm very proud of being your treasurer. And I want to commit my next four years to you for that. I think that my background and the proven successes the office has, ha has had makes you see that we are definitely the best option for that. So thank you.